Hello. 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 I've closed Hello. the wrong window. Right. <laughs> there we go. Right. Welcome to uh, a lesson. In with, Dr. Uh, Liam, Dr. Liam, Dr. and Dr. Evans, and, and Professor, <laughs> and John Beach, and John Beach. Hello, Who John. Is here, uh, he's crashing the stream via an A4 piece of paper. <laughs> well done, well done, John. I knew you'd do it. Just I knew you'd make it. Away. Is that okay? That's, that, there we go. He did it. He did it all the way from New York City. Um, um, so you guys have got uh, what, what, what? Yeah, we don't know what, what we're we going to talk about. We're going to talk about dreams <laughs> under the hood. Uh, yeah. Basically. Uh, dreams is a thing that you all have, and um, sometimes it's interesting to know what's underneath it. People watching this stream, you don't have to understand anything that's about to happen in the next hour. And honestly, Liam and I don't actually know yet. We've yeah, we're going to sort of wing it a bit. Uh, um, I was saying to Liam just before, if anyone's got any questions, ask them. And I will relay them. Yes. I might not have any idea what yeah. I'm saying. I'm going to do an intro first, a little scene set but yeah mm. uh, we try to make dreams really easy and accessible yeah. and you don't actually have to understand any of this but sometimes you know you don't have to understand a car to drive a car something like that analogy yeah. you don't have to know how to make a guitar to play a guitar but when your car goes wrong or if you want to make your car go faster or drive it better it's sometimes useful to know how it works so that's what this stream is about nice and um Cue overhead camera. Okay, Mr. right. So I've got I've got all sorts going on. Look oh, at this. Okay. I can draw. That's I'm, very clever. If I'm, yeah, they're going woo. Big love to Ant for setting that up. <laughs> thanks, Just, thanks. Uh, no, and <laughs> yeah. Um, so basically, obviously, you've got atoms, and then you've got like uh, sand. Can I you like see this? We're starting this stream on on the dreams yeah. engine. Yeah. Like, obviously, obviously, you start with atoms, and then you get <laughs> silicon, and, sand. and then you get chips, right? <laughs> and fish. <laughs> That's unrelated to the chips. And then uh, you get the CPU and all that lo lovely stuff. And then on top of the CPU, you're sort of getting into software-y land. You've probably got some firmware. Nice. And then you've got your operating system, which on a PlayStation 4 is, you know, a PS4 yep. OS thing. And then you got your, what's on top of that? Your SDK, I guess? Yeah, you got SDK, PlayStation 4 SDK, which is what we use all day, every yep. day. And on top of that, you have your engine, which is not just the graphics engine, but also the, yeah, what we're going to talk about yeah, today. Yeah, it's really. everything from, like, you know, how, how the, the sounds are made to how, how the how the scenes are yep. stored to how the... And then on top of stuff. that, you've probably got your game code, which is sort of, um, Liam is basically our lead game coder more or less you and Matt mm. can do sure. it out for yeah. the title but <laughs> yeah. <coughs> so game code which is sort of the rules of the game if you like how does Connie handle you know on top of that because in dreams you have an extra layer which is the edit mode that you lovely people all use uh, which is you know all of the UI and gadgets and tweaks and all that stuff yep. uh, and then on top of that you have your sort of game design which actually at this point um, uh you lot are all making, and then uh, and then on top of that, you have your players who are playing and enjoying the lovely uh, thing. Stuff. And so everyone has a different sort of place where they're comfortable, you know. So like, everyone knows it's turtles all the way down, right? So you can enjoy dreams just as a player, and they just they, they engage with the game design. And below that, they don't really care. It's just turtles. Yep. Mm. Uh, <laughs> or you can sort of be more of a creator in dreams and you can sort of care about edit mode but you don't really care about how edit mode works it just does more or less most of the time and there's turtles all the way down uh, and then you know as you get to work in media molecule and watch the stream you sort of <laughs> care more and more about you know further down and everyone is comfortable in a different place and that's okay yeah so i'd say that for example an alex lands um uh, where do i live you see i'm rubbish at edit mode i'm not actually very good at using the tools, yeah, which is I why spend too much time on the server, Alex. It's just yeah, the no, it's me. but I mean, the cheek of it. I basically, <laughs> I, I'm I'm good in the sort of not even the game code to be honest. Basically, I'm just in this little whingy bit here. I understand the SDK and the engine, and maybe a little bit of the game code historically. That's an Alex. Yeah, where are you, Liam? Uh, I'd say I'm. Oh, I don't know. I'm I'm probably about. Well, you take the pen. I'll yeah. I'd say I go from well, edit mode is sort of my my area of the stuff that I work on, and obviously game code is. Most of what I spend most of my time writing. Yeah. Engine-wise, yeah, I interact a little bit with the engine, so I say I'm somewhere a little bit in, higher up in that sort of that sort of bracket there. 
And our goal on the stream is that all of you lot have had no choice, poor, poor people, to <laughs> be stuck in the Turtles flow edit mode. And so although you'll never need to know about uh, how the game code works, and maybe a little bit of the engine today, I don't want to focus too much on graphics, but yeah. we will throw in if you have questions. Um, and obviously we have no control over the SDK and the OS and the firmware and stuff. Yep. One of the funniest things is wherever you choose to put your turtles, everyone assumes the turtles are solid. Basically, you know, a typical engine programmer assumes that the <laughs> SDK is, yeah, was course. designed lovingly. And, and, you know, players always assume that your game design was a you know, just, just perfect was from the perfectly start. formed from the, the start. They used to sat down and just wrote it. But as you know, when you start making dreams, uh, often your best ideas turn out rubbish and then your worst ideas turn out to be... Yeah, or your, or your mistakes turn out to be the best ideas. Exactly, you know? exactly. <laughs> so uh, the funniest thing is that when you reveal, when you remove the, t the veil of turtles, you discover that rather than it this being this pristine foundation of like super strong, you know, like a strong super, that's a picture of a strong thing. <laughs> Actually, yeah, what happens is it got these extra bits sellotaped to it. And, you know, and then there's this like, oh, that bit wasn't very good. So I added that bit. And the hilarious part is all of computers in general are just a steaming pile of <laughs> I'm not going to say no. it. Yeah. Oh good, nice. I have <laughs> well, I have stripy socks. Uh, <laughs> that's important. And they're odd and they're both stripy and they're of different kinds and odd shoes. <laughs> And stripe it up. Nice. Just saying, brand. no comment. <laughs> <laughs> well, enough of that rubbish. But basically, everything is a big mess. I don't know how the I don't get access to the SDK or the OS or the firmware or the CPU or the chips or the silicon or the fish. But I bet you. Well, I don't believe in God, but atoms and sand, I'm going to assume, are pretty solid. But basically, everything <laughs> above <laughs> atoms and sand is is a corrupted mess. Um, mm. So if, you are, if, you, if you're wondering on the stream why Alex is streams where it is, a lot of it is because Liam and I sat down to make something called Unicorn, yep. which was mm. the rewrite of dreams, about the 900th rewrite of dreams. And we just made a bunch of decisions that we were both experienced people we thought would be interesting. Some of it was just for the sake of it, of like, let's try that. Yeah. yeah I yeah. mean, we knew I what we wanted to make. We knew we wanted to make dreams. Exactly. At this point, we'd, we'd already been working on dreams for what, like a number of years. So we had like an idea of, you know, here's the design and we're like, okay, how exactly do we like make the thing that does exactly that? Like it's Exactly. Like, mm. um, so we, so, and, and, and we still made mistakes. We still, oh, absolutely. We still <laughs> made a bunch of structural and architectural choices that have haunt, haunt us to this day. So, <laughs> so as we explain this, sometimes you might ask on the chat, like, but why? <laughs> why have you done it that way? Mm. Honestly, there's not always a good answer. It's gut. Yeah. As your same way that when you're creating your dream, it really does feel the same way to us. We're just using different tools than you in the sense that I'm writing C code and you're using edit mode. But often you're like, I could make an emitter and do a bloody blah, blah. And actually we have a guest on the stream later, Christoph, who's going to throw mm -hmm. in a few creator tips to le leaven the mood. Yep. <laughs> um, but there's different ways to do things, right? And it's the same is true inside the engine. So, so I'm now going to talk about the random things that we end up with. So how is a... Dream. A dream. A dream. A dream. A dream. <laughs> One dream. Uh, oh. uh, that's got an extra bounce in the M. But a dream <laughs> is made up of uh, things. It's a technical term at Media Molecule, and it really is a technical term. They are things. Everything is a thing. So uh, a dream is made of a thing. A lot of things, actually. There's, a, there's like a special buffer called the soup for the things, and it's in your PS4's memory, and basically all the things have to fit inside the soup. And we're going to yep. start talking about thermos. So this is all about why the thermometers are the way the thermometers are. This is where this is building to. So there are things. I'll explain some examples of we, what sort of things are there. Uh, oh, God, loads. We've got, uh, well, the obvious ones are sculpts and groups, sculpts you know, the, the, the obvious ones. But then you've got things like every gadget is a thing. Uh, Anything you can click on with the X button to select it. Yeah. That is a thing. That is true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. With the exception of, he said, because in coding there's Oh, always. no, yeah, actually, now I'm thinking about it. Yeah, you've got, oh, well, there's, well, there's there's, wires. there's also also sat like uh, notes in the sound view aren't things. Ah, oh, let's talk about that. So, but, uh, so there are things, and things are um, like entities. Is another common word for yep. them. In, in yeah, games. there's loads so of names in in all sorts of game engines for this, and they're all as equally meaningless as each other. <laughs> they're just. Um, so we have things, and uh, things are the th <laughs> things are the things which change a lot. So if you can tweak it, it's a thing, right? Yep. And. Dreams is built to be very, very dynamic. So if it's in a thing, it means you can tweak it. You can change it. And we, we assume that you're going to change it every frame. Even if you don't, you can use an action recorder to connect a wire. So wires are very, very simple. Each wire is literally uh, two things, and we call them thing 
indices. Thing refs. Thing refs. Thing references. Thing references. So a wire is literally, in fact, while I'm typing, do you want to grab the wire definition off the camera oh while yeah, I uh, yeah, give uh, that So we will show you this actual C structure of a wire. So you're going into it's, the... Uh, but no, stay on the... Oh, stay on, stay on, on me the, for a bit. Okay, cool, I'm just cool, going to cool. do some sneaky... Uh, uh, so hang on, all sorts of setups. Oh, so you still your camera's still on here? We camera's still on your awesome. notepad. You're Fantastic, still, you still guys. Draw away. Right. <laughs> so wires are basically th two thing refs and a property in each of them. So basically, all a wire is is oh, I'm joining together, and we're going to prove that actually I'm wrong because Liam's going to look up what a wire actually is and what I will be. Oh, I it's, got, it's got a couple of bits in there that aren't. Oh, okay, but, but it's, it's a wire is a connection between two things that. and Just in particular the property of A and a property of B, running. where property is a tweak. Right, anyway, that's things <laughs> uh, and wires. And there's a pool of things and there's a pool of wires. And uh, the key thing to remember is that things can change. So then we were like, ooh, but what about stuff that doesn't change? Like um, animation data. Animation data, so the sound data you've sound created data by you recording. Created. The um, sculpture. Sculpture, sculpt data. Sculptures you've done. Yep. So they, they are called something called pages. And uh, if you want to know why they're called pages, they're actually called SO pages, and I don't even remember what SO stands for. Shared object? I kind of want to think object. it's shared object, but I don't. OK. <laughs> now, this is cool. This is important. So. And this is another, this is all going to build to the thermo. So SO pages, which are in fact, if you want to Google it, a content addressed B tree known as a Merkle tree. Yep, that's um, right. You can, Merkle is M-E-R-K-L-E. -E, and content ad is a content addressable store uh, via a Merkle tree of hashes, TM. Um, so... Pages are actually 512 byte, yep. half a kilobyte mm -hmm. of stuff that what you have made that doesn't change. Yes. That's all it is. And they get arranged into these little trees, but you can just think of it as like stuff. And uh, the more stuff you make, the bigger the tree. Yep. So when you sculpt, for example, and you put down a sphere and a... Actually, could you dig out... Oh, we haven't even looked at this yet. Let's go to wire. Backtrack. We can go, we can go to wires. <laughs> we can do wires. We switch to the... So you want to switch to that camera? The code view. Okay, cool. Is the chat enjoying it so far? I believe I believe so. Yes, they're saying yeah. this is the stream that it's a few of them. Have we got anyone waiting for the stream? Completely lost. Cool. Uh, <laughs> We've right. got a couple of questions. So I'm just going to prove well. that wires really are this simple. That is actual code from Dreams. This is actual Dreams code. Uh, there is a source thing ref, which is the thing it's connected to. There's a That's destination that. thing ref. There is a what's that? There's a header. I forgot my glasses, and I hope. Oh I no! Can't no, read. no. I might um, go and get my glasses actually. Yeah, so all, all the wires doing. Do you want me to get someone to get your glasses, Alex? They're in my like yeah, man so bag that's like by my desk. Shall I get? I'll get Costa to bring your bag in. <laughs> <That'd> <laughs> be be amazing. Amazing. Let me. Let me. It's drop also them. got yeah. weak old Haribo at the bottom of my bag, not in a bag, just just loose. Okay. Don't eat them. No, probably not the best. Don't eat the Haribo. Just, right. just in case he was going to be tempted to. Um, Eat the Haribo. Yeah, so that's an actual thing. What's, what's this that is an actual function. What's that say? Is I the same wire? I just uh, so this is a function that just lets you compare two wires. But yeah, the, all the all that wires, all that really matters about wires. In fact, like these are just functions. We can we can not worry too much about them. But all you have really have in here is you've got where does the wire come from, where does the wire go, and then some information about the wire. And what um, is a wire header? Wire header. I'm gonna have to quickly. So while he's thinking about wire header, let's go back stuff. to the notepad. Notepad. Okay, cool. Okay. I'm enjoying this these cues. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so we've got the pages now. Now. All you need to think about is pages is stuff you've made in create mode that doesn't change. So a sculpt, an animation that you recorded, um, uh, some, oh, look at this, Claire, okay, Claire Patchell, to the rescue. Evil right. Kamal on Twitter, the hero that we all need for bag. Thank you, Claire. <laughs> bag fetching when blind. Ah, I don't need my glasses to do this, but I, <laughs> to read the screen I do. Ah, oh, bum hats, where is it gone? Here we go. It's good. I think it works with uh, the Professor Alex persona. That yeah, that really yeah, is. Yeah. Yeah. Professor Alex is in the house. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, yeah, so there's stuff that you've made that's not changing. So when you're sculpting, it's an edit history. So one of the things people are surprised about in Dreams is the load times are really low. And the, one of the reasons for that is because what we actually store is all the things that you did to make that sculpt. So you did a bit of red paint here, a little bit of a uh, blue bit there, a little bit of a sphere here, some rotating cuts here. And that's what goes is a little list, literal list of like, first you did this, then you did this, then you did this. And it goes into a SO page, uh, which is literally just an array of, um, or it's treated as a list of things to do. Yep. Right. Um, the cool thing is they're shared. Ooh, what does that mean? Uh, and bear in mind, that each of these boxes here is a pool that the thermometers are going to hold you to. So there's a limit yep. on the number of things, there's a fixed limit on the number of wires, and there's a fixed limit on the number of SO pages. And um, 
as you create longer animations, as you create bigger sculpts, as you draw more music into a music thing, yep. um, they burn your SO pages. And But the cool part is, if two SO pages contain the same contents, so for example, two sculpts, two different things, if you have if you have um, a little happy face here, that's a, that's a thing, and then you clone it, you actually do now have two things. Yep. So, so as you're cloning stuff, and as if you're Kareem, you immediately have 9,000 faces. <laughs> of course. <laughs> and even though they're identical, you are burning up things, and there's nothing we can do about it because they might have different positions, they might get deleted. Yep. Different tweaks, et different et cetera, tweaks. Et cetera. And that's why tweaking things is relatively cheap, because you're just changing the thingness yep. of it, the properties. Anything you can tweak is up here in the thing land. And you've already paid for it. Yeah. Once you've cloned something, you've already paid for your thing. You might as well make it red or green or yeah, purple exactly. Or it's no much more expensive to change any of its yeah. properties. Uh, but all of these sculpts need to know where they get their list of edits from, and ooh, they all point at exactly the same page. So they all share the same, um, and uh, th it knows that because it hashes, which is a technical thing, where it takes that list and it computes a magical number, and it basically says, "Oh yes, I can tell that your hat, your sculpt, and your sculpt are actually the same list, so I will share." the same SO pages, uh, which is why unique. Uh, often people say, learn to use modules, do the same thing over and over again, because they're, they're using the same SO pages. Yep. Um, but as soon as you like put a little uh, ear on uh, your cute person, that list is no longer the same. Yep. And so they get allocated new SO pages, and that there's more. There's more. There's more. Here is your happy little PS4 <laughs> GPU. Mm. And the, one of the things that the GPU does when you're sculpting is it takes these lists of instructions, because we can't actually render the list of do this, then this, then this, then this, and this. So basically, via the magic of Simon Brown, who I shall draw here as a sad, <laughs> sad square, um, that's Simon, SJB. Thank you, Simon. Um, via the power of Simon and your PS4, we take these lists of, of stuff and we, we put them through a giant PS4 GPU thing, and it spits out little teeny tiny bricks of voxel data. So everything in Dreams is actually, it turns from these edits into voxels, and they are in 8x8x8 eight by eight by eight volume blocks. And we store a color per voxel, so RGB, and we also store a distance, uh, which is basically how close that voxel is to the surface. So the reason it doesn't look like Minecraft World is if you have a very tight sculpt, you have a lot of voxels. And if you have a very loose sculpt, you have not very many voxels. So when you use the sculpt tool, uh, not the looseness slider up here, because yeah. all the looseness slider does is change the rendering. We haven't got to that bit yet. Yep. But the, the, the detail tool. The detail tool. Yep. Thank you. Did you write the detail tool? Uh, no, I think Simon did the initial blast of that. Or maybe it was Anton M, actually, maybe. It was mm. maybe Anton M slash Simon way back when. Props to those guys. Um, that chooses how many of these little voxel bricks to make. If you have a very tight one, it will make this little happy, sad Simon with the PS4 GPU in a glorious bubble of cloud for no good reason. <laughs> they will. It decides how many little these bricks to make. These are called bricks. Um, all these words are just made up by Media Molecule. They don't apply <laughs> to any other company or any other engine. So it makes lots of bricks. And you can make thousands of bricks like tens of thousands of bricks. We also make bricks for when it's far away and when it's near, which is how we do level of detail. Yep. So in fact, there's a single brick, which is your whole sculpt for very far away. Yep, and then there's like eight baby bricks for a bit closer. And then Oops. another, what's? 64 must be. 64, 64 I assume. Yeah, yeah, from one to eight, yeah so 64. Sounds That's right. a bit closer. And then it keeps going, it keeps going, it keeps going. The good bit is that all the solid stuff inside is thrown away. So all of the like, the bricks are only near the crust, we call it, near yep. the crust of your sculpt. Anyway, uh, depending on how tight or loose it is, you get more or less bricks. And there's a budget of bricks, of course there is, so it's another box. So there's a thermo for, for bricks, there's a thermo for pages, there's a thermo for wires, there's a thermo for things. And each of these different things, wh wh why, Evans, do we not just have the 8 gigabytes of the PlayStation 4's memory? Is that, well, we have to carve it up because each of these different areas has different strengths and weaknesses. Things are really good at changing. Wires are simple and they have a cost associated with runtime costs, so we want to limit them yep. artificially almost anyway. Um, and another example is doors. For people who follow me know that like, we limit the number of door things completely arbitrarily because Nathan Ruck doesn't want to have to do the UI for more portals. <laughs> Confirmed. Fair enough. But we are Fair debating enough. it with him. We read yep. your feedback, um, so maybe more doors will come. But there's actually no fundamental engine reason yet why we limit the number of 
door things to ten, but we do. Um, although there's a there's an exploit apparently you oh. can get to like 129,000 percent of that thermo. Yeah. Wow. Anyway, moving on. Fun, fun, fun. Yeah. Um, I didn't know that until <laughs> I learned. Uh, so pages are good. What are they good for? Well, they're good at sharing. That's why they've got the S in their name. And then these bricks are good at rendering. Now, these bricks are used directly for um, rendering the tight end. So when, when your thing doesn't look painterly, mm -hmm. you are probably looking directly at bricks. And we use something called sphere tracing. You can Google that which is a kind of ray tracing, kind of, sort of. Um, and if you look at my SIGGRAPH talk, it's from 2015, uh, which is on the Media Molecule YouTube channel, Umbra Ignite talk, I think it's called. The This is the Bricks engine that we gave up on. Yeah. We didn't, but we, we, we Simon brought it back. So the since that talk, we have gone back to the Brick engine, which is where we directly draw these bricks. And the reason is because if you watch the E3 trailer, Mm. From 2015? 2015? Yeah. yeah, yeah. That was amazing. That was, however, had a dirty secret, which you can <gasps> see in the video, which is that everything is a little bit transparent because everything was made by dotting, by scattering little dots. And there were holes occasionally, not very often, but occasionally there were holes that missed a, missed a pixel. And that means that, as, for example, the spaceship flies through the city, you can actually see the lights in the streets through the buildings. Mm. Oops. Oh. And basically, we had two choices. Uh, we could <laughs> give up and go home. No, <laughs> that wasn't one of the choices. Yeah. Uh, we could splat more to try and cover up the holes, but then our performance tanked, Absolutely. so our frame rate was rubbish. Yep. Um, or we could splat less and have more holes, but then everything was transparent, and that was no good. So we just lived with it for that video, and you can, mm. if you rewatch that video, you will see lots of lights shining through stuff. And you can only really see it. They're so untransparent. They're like, it's like looking through very dark black plastic. Like they, yeah. they're like if you know 0 it's 0 0.1, yeah, it's 0.1% yeah. transparent. So you really have to have a big old light behind it to really see it. But of course, that's what you will do. So we switch back to a so-called gather-based technique where we, we, we directly trace these, these bricks. And then we scatter the, the lovely fluff on top. So we actually do both, basically. Uh, where was I? So, pages are good at sharing. Bricks are good at using up your memory. This, this is the biggest one. I've drawn this a big box. This is like gigabytes. I forget how many gigabytes, but it's big. Most basically, of the, most biggest of the memory. Chunk of our memory. Yep. And let's not forget audio. So the notes go into the SO pages, but what about the samples? You know, the, the ELD samples. Well, they go into um, uh, two. Mm, yeah, well, there's a PCM <laughs> buffer, which I think is 128 megabytes. And then there's also some shenanigans with your hard drive, and it actually streams stuff back and forth. So it's a bit fuzzier. Um, uh, and some of the thermos there are more around limiting download time and less about the limits on the, on the PS4, because it's like, well, we just don't want you to have 100 megabytes of audio on your level, because then someone loading that level would have to then download 100 megs. So we actually limit some of the audio, again, a bit like the doors. We just make a, a user experience choice yeah. rather than a than a technical choice. So there is a PCM buffer and there's a thermo for that as well. And then as as you make a sound object, which is one of the biggest things actually, so sounds and effect fields are the fattest of the things. They, well, they're, they're Puppet heart though? Puppet heart. Puppet heart's pretty big. That could be the winner. Yeah. But sound's um, probably a close second I imagine. Uh, yes, yeah, so sound is, is up there. It's got over a hundred properties. Oof. Thomas Weld is in the room. Yeah, over hundred properties. Nodding. <laughs> Nodding. So yeah, they're they're fat. Um, but they refer to uh, the slices that you see in the uh, view when you open up a sound with X and you can see the shift X and you can see the, the slices. They're in the mm -hmm. SO pages. But they refer to samples which we call waves. I don't know why we call them waves. Because why not? Because why not? <laughs> the thing, the thing actually has a kitchen. The kitchen points at the at the pages, which contain sausages. sausages. The sausages <laughs> refer to waves, of which there's a limit. So there's actually a little buffer of waves, and that's just a description of the wave. It's not the wave itself. So I think we have a limit of like a thousand of them or something, or maybe four thousand, some number of unique waves. And again, there's a uniqueness angle going on here. And then the waves on demand are loaded off the disk. Uh, and expanded into this PCM buffer, uh, which we try to not use too much of. Um, and so sometimes when you play your music, the first time it plays, you might hear some problems, or it might not have, because it's, it's a bit surprising. It's like, oh, I haven't got that off your hard drive yet, so yep. I need to load it. We do something called sound pinning, which tries to get ahead of the game. But in the UGC game, it's very hard to know in advance. In a traditional yep. game engine, you would actually get your audio designer to go through and mark up which sounds 
come first, but we don't ask you to do that, so sometimes it makes a mistake. Anyway, all of these relate to thermos. I thought we could bring up the enum of thermos. We can. We can uh, so we've got a whole bunch of thermos, thermometers in the game, as Alex has just gone through. Um, back to the code screen. Back to the there code are, screen. There are... Uh, oh, we've got wireheaders here. Oh, we've got wireheaders. Wire yeah, back, uh, back to wireheaders. Just, just to talk quickly about what else wires have. They have this thing called a header, um, which is using a, a sneaky trick to try and um, to try and use some extra to try and minimise the amount of data it takes up. But basically, what it stores is the ones you want to worry about are op, and this is basically what what does the wire do if you're plugged into colour? This will be the colour number. Oh, that's the port. Okay, yeah. the port. So if this so basically, if you're wired into if your wire is going to colour, this will be the number that means colour. If it's wired into something's, I don't know, the the input port of an AND gate. Mm. This will be a special number that means I'm the input port of an AND gate. Um, and then this is, this is where it comes from. So this is where it goes to. This is where it comes from. So this will be like, oh, I'm coming out of the the calculator's mm. results port, whatever yep. it is. Yep. Uh, and then there's some other flags here um, that we just use for sneaky stuff. Um, one of them here is is because we actually use wires for animations as well. So basically all wires in Dreams do is that they, they just mean change something over here it's wires just basically change data and that's what animations do right they just mm -hmm. they just change values they just move things they just you know basically yeah. make things be I, different. Lo I love the fact that one of them is a bull and the other is a u8 yeah. even though <laughs> and that's a, uh, that's so media molecule basically we have I, holy wars about style just and clearly the person who put the bull there was like <laughs> no it ought to be a bull it shouldn't be a u8 but i'm they're wrong it should be a u8 yeah it's just really nice put that no, it's, wrong. Just, it's not going to go into the actual code but we can just oh, look, look how much nicer fixed, that is bug fixed it's yeah <laughs> But basically, this just tells you whether this is an animation wire or not, because yeah. uh, they need to be treated slightly differently. Um, so yeah, so that's why it headers. But ooh, so we're going to go into should we go into thermometers now? Yeah, let's, let's do some thermos. Let's reveal. So and I believe that Mark Adami is work. working on some new UI for thermos to give you he more is, detail. He's, he's oh, giving nice. it some uh, some extra tips on how to reduce and telling you what's gone wrong in your scene. So this. So this comes directly from one of our files that has. This is uh, the this is the real list of thermos. These, we these are all the things we can count. So we've got. Um, Oh god knows. So basically for each line you're seeing here, all it's you can ignore sort of this part of each line. Um, this part specifically is the sort of what we what, the tool what we call the thermo. This is the, this, well, the, the tool tip you see when you hover over the thing in the bottom left. Um, and the reason this doesn't look like what you see is because this is sort of a, uh, an identifier. It's basically a way of doing uh, translations. Sort of doing translations. So for localization purposes, um, we basically for every string in the game have like an ID. It has some readable name that we can read so we know that this is like the, the words that need to tell you that this is the brick limit. Yeah, and then Lucy and Adam have to basically go and beat up a program and say, what does limit sculpt bricks mean? <laughs> yep. And uh, and then they write a beautiful English. Uh, yeah, and then it gets translated into all the languages, so dreams can go all around the world, which is great. Uh, and then we've got, yeah, like all of our thermometers. So if we scroll down, we actually have, oh God, I don't even know what the count is here, but it's... But it goes to 54 lines. And there's a few gaps. Let's say there's about 50 of them. Yeah, let's have a look at Maybe them. Sculpt little. bricks. That's that's the, that's the bottom that right was, of that. That was my pads. diagram. The number of bricks you're allowed. So tight tight uh, sculpts will murder that number. Yep. Sculpt balls. Interesting. That's I physics. Think this is physics. So our physics engine largely just decomposes every model you see into a large number of, of balls. So I forgot to draw that. That also is a fixed limit. So there's a limit limited number of balls, and every time you make your object movable, what's it called in game? Yeah, Physical. Uh, yeah, movable. Movable. Yeah, yeah, but movable. also collidable. It has to put balls inside it. Interestingly, if it's not movable but is collidable, it doesn't need balls, yep. I believe. It can Correct. so so landscapes can use their bricks directly, which is the distance field. Uh, but then if it needs to move then we use balls. So and by balls we literally mean balls. Like everything in, <laughs> in dreams is it's li literal. Is literal yeah. balls. Yeah. Literally balls. Wow. Is, um, so so the, the shape of your character, the limbs, each thing has got its own separate balls. So you know your character might be made out of twenty things, hands, forearms, heads. Um, and each of those has balls packed inside it, and when you choose the physics detail, you're basically choosing how small how are the balls. balls. Yep. Right. Um, so yes, as you add more collidable, movable things, your balls will go up. <laughs> a balls we, up. Yeah, we, uh, which is completely, <laughs> completely like sensible right now. It's totally sensible. Our code has has no fun with this this word at all. No. Uh, so uh, the next one is is sprites. So that's your in, in paint mode. That's what we call them internally. We call, call them sprites. sprites. Yeah. Um, so that's that's how many like of those when you when you use paint mode to draw, you get lo like lo lots of those little. We should splats. get we should get Adami. If Adami fancies having a break from whatever he's doing, he can come yes. and tell us about paint mode because oh, I know that the, yeah. the team would love that. So just shout out to Adami if he needs to, needs <laughs> needs a break. Um, uh, audio download. So this is the one where it's actually counting um, how much unique audio is in your level. 
purely to prevent you from downloading too much, as in causing your players to download too much. Yep. And we actually do a discount, which is normally the rule is Media Molecule use the same tools as you, which is 100% true, but it's 99% true because I apply a discount. So if it's on the Blu-ray, and if I know that the sound is on the package that you downloaded or the Blu-ray that you bought eventually, um, I don't know. Anyway, if we know that you have it on your PS4 already, then you don't need to download it. Yeah. So yeah. I don't include it in the download size. So there's a sort of that's a rare case where Media Molecule content gets a kind of free pass. So if you use Media Molecule sounds, they don't count towards that thermometer. Whereas if you use sounds from the Dreamiverse by random people or yourself, it counts towards that. Right, yep. wave count is just a limit on the unique sound. So yep. If you have too many unique samples or slices, they will, it will be sad. Yep. Think out. Think out, that's how many things. Number very of often, that's the one Kareem always slams into. Yep. Uh, wires, likewise, very simple. Oh, physics balls, interesting. So that's. Ooh, what's a sculpt ball versus a physics ball? Oh, I don't know. Nobody that knows. One, that would be one for that's Anton K. Nobody knows. So we've got, so we've got, we've got two ball limits. Uh, <laughs> and we don't. <laughs> Uh, we've got a limit on number of joints. You uh, that's your connectors so in, in the level. Yeah, connectors. Uh, so, um, that's there for performance reasons. So basically, yeah. the reason we limit that is you could fit more in memory, but uh, would, the, would the frame rate enjoy that? Probably not. So we, we limit that for frame rate reasons. Indeed. Uh, I don't think we have collector bobs at the moment. I think this is a feature we don't currently. Oh, no, we do have, do we have collector bobs. No, these, no, these are the things you get in your... Uh, in the in bubbles. The, yeah, in the bubbles, in your home space, of course it is. Yeah. So, um, so when you're in the home space at the start and you pick up all those things you can place in the home space, that's what those are. Are they uh, not prizes, though? They might be prizes. Prizes slash collector bubbles. That's to do overlap. with inventory, which is a feature which that is, uh, we, we axed as yes, an example of, of something true. that we played around the... So a lot of, a lot of uh, dreams I've noticed are brilliant, and we should talk about variables. Yeah. Um, they are building their own inventory systems, which is awesome. And basically, we built an inventory system kind of out of the box that was based off of, I forget whether it's collector bubbles or prizes. I think it's collector bubbles. Collector bubbles, I think. Yeah. It was very LBP-ish. Um, in the end, it wasn't quite right. And so we sort of binned think, it for the time being. Yeah, it was more that it just needed more work. And, you know, we had, you know, we wanted to get the game dreams out. out into your hands so you could start using it. So yep. it was that sort of thing of, of all the things we had, we figured it was, yep. you know. Uh, portals mm. are the doors. Yep. This is why I get so confused on stream because nothing that you know is called what... <laughs> yeah, that's what yeah, I've heard a lot of people. Like, very different it's names. completely different. It's completely different. Studio. So, like, did you know... Well, no, even the studio. I mean, what I mean is what you see on the screen of the TV of PS4 of Dreams is different from what I see in the code every day. So, for right, example, yeah. the dreams that you make are called maps in my world. Yeah. The... Scenes that you make are called dreams, which is really confusing because dreams are one thing for you and one thing for me. <laughs> the elements, which are the hexagons, are objects, and the uh, collections are collections. Collections have survived. Collections have got there. Yeah. 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 Uh, Unless you're on the game code side of things, in which case they're all called games. Oh. Because, because if, you know, if it's a model, <laughs> if it's a level, it doesn't matter, it's all games, it's all games. on our side of things. So, um, uh, so yes. Sprites. In a minute, we're going to do a what would the chat like to talk about next? We've got a few, we, got a few uh, questions. Should we, do, should we do a Q&A section? Yeah, we, we can, yeah. Let's do a Q&A yeah, section. Yeah, let's, let's do that. So, Lombax Pieboy asked, I'm going to change the camera quickly. Yeah, yeah so we see this over. Oh, there, you can't see what's going should on. We, well, let's all tap oh, yeah, um, to, to, to get that back up. Okay. There you go. Hello. Um, so, Lombax Pieboy, going back to when you were talking about like the high level of memory for audio, I mm. uh, was saying, what if we could flag our levels as high audio amount and warn people of said data? But I imagine that's just because we want it more general, so everyone, no one has to worry about that. Yeah, I mean, uh, the amount that we allow is actually really high, and we compress using a track nine. So I believe it's like an hour of audio or something. Like, uh, as mm. in, if you're hitting that thermometer, I guess we could raise it. But I think, I don't think that's one. Maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think that's the ceiling that most people slam into. And if they are, maybe delete some multi samples. I think the, the, the quickest way to, to, to get through that is that you might have instruments with tons and tons of, of um, different notes inside them. And it's actually, right. with almost no quality reduction, you can delete the um, some of those things. I, I don't know, I feel like, yeah. The bigger picture of what you're asking is, you've got all these fixed, um, we've got all these fixed buckets or pools, if you like. You've got a pool of things, a pool of wires, pool of pages, pool of soup, pool of bricks. Uh, and to some extent, we could kind of give from one and take from another. But what the thing that the thing that makes it hard is actually it makes QA harder and it makes um, performance measurement harder because all of these thermometers are actually guesses. We don't 
the, the PS4 even and Media Molecule don't even know how fast or slow your engine, your level is going to run yeah. exactly. So some of these limits are not just there for memory reasons. Some of these limits are just there of like, ooh, let's, we literally, we just suck our teeth a little bit and go, how many things should we have? Ooh, 10,000. Yeah. And we put a number in. And then we use it and you use it. And then we see whether people are bumping into it or not. So right. the door one is my favorite at the moment because it was clearly set too low. And we just sucked our teeth and went 10. And I like beating Nathan up about it, but it's not really his fault. He just, he set a limit yeah. that seemed reasonable to him at the time. And actually briefly about variables. Mm. That was another one that people are slamming into 128 variables. Yes. Um, and we'll look at that, but it's actually variables have a bunch of small issues with them. They came in very late, so we hadn't used them much. Yeah. So it's really interesting that like, when we make, as coders, we make decisions like, oh, how many variables should we allow? A PC game might be like unbounded. And if you use an engine like Unity or Unreal, they don't often have these kind of um, fixed limits. But as a result, you get this horrible scramble at the end to squeeze your game into, um, into frame rate, into, into disk size, into memory, especially for low-end PCs and stuff. In the console world, it's totally different. If you ask a console programmer dating back to the 80s, we, we come from that lineage of like, there's no virtual memory, there's no drive, it's eight gigabytes the end. And the OS mm. has taken three or whatever, it, I don't remember how much it takes. But basically we're in the living in a world where it's much more black or white. It's like, you've got this many bytes, this many cycles, this much GPU. So we tend to prefer hard limits and then we add flexibility later. So the question is basically, can you add flexibility in audio, but in general? And yes, we could add flexibility, and we will do if it's really important. If you're bumping into a limit, uh, so from LBP1 to LBP2, for example, we did those kind of things. So, yep. we, so LBP2 has a much more dynamic, fluid uh, apportionment yep. of the thermos. Um, but we only did that with the confidence of having seen millions of levels made in yeah. LBP1. Yeah. And in Dreams, we were basically making up these numbers as we were going along. Yeah. And it's worth noting that we make up the numbers, we try and aim lower than necessary just because it's much easier to raise a limit than it is to reduce a limit. Like if you've made stuff that hits that limit, we're sort of, our hands are tied. We can't really bring exactly. down the maximum number of scops you can have, the number of things, because backwards otherwise your level just stops working, right? Yeah, yeah. so we, we take backwards compatibility increasingly seriously. I'd say we take it very seriously. I'd like to take it even more seriously, yeah, but absolutely. like we try not to break your levels. Really um, and so we have we have to be very cautious because we can never turn any of these numbers down. We can only ever turn them up. Mm. I'm repeating yeah. it, but it's, it's important to note. So, yeah. so we're cautious. Um, and, and variables, yeah. 128, we're gonna yeah. increase it. Uh, but that was an example where they came in so late. And originally it was just for like, for our levels, it was like, have you collected this? Have you talked to this character? A um, couple of things, doesn't need any more than that. And of course, you amazing people out there are doing like giant map select, name entry. Detailed RPGs uh, with, yeah. with character stats and all sorts, <laughs> of, all sorts of wonderful things that I can't yeah. wait to get. Yeah, fair enough. So, we, so we, we will, and we are, looking at the uses of variable going, holy, heck, another nice. swear, holy heck. Holy heck. What the heck? Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and 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 reassessing our, our limit there. Um, yeah. Okay. Next question. Uh, I Bubex, uh, uh, can you explain how loose shapes are cheaper on the thermo? How can that? Yes. Yeah. So if we go back to the notepad view. You know, notepad view. <coughs> yeah. Um, I'm enjoying this different. Uh, all think. these different views. It's a so work of art. I'm going to try and I'm going to try and draw this. So so let's say I do a really simple sculpt, which is just a. Uh, um, a circle and a, and a square. Yep. And so in terms of the SO pages box, this is a really cheap thing because it, it, it's just literally like, do a circle at four comma seven. That's what the, um, the SO page system sounds like. And then it says, and then do a square. Thanks. Um, right, and then, but it also says, oh, um, I'm quite tight. Tight, please. Right, so that's your little recipe. In fact, we should have called them recipes. We missed an <laughs> opportunity there. Yeah, so, right, the SO page recipe. We had kitchens, we had sausages, we yeah, didn't. The recipe <laughs> is very point. short, but it says typers. And so Simon comes along, or Simon's code comes along, and it basically goes, right, tight. You want tight? I can do tight, mate. And it, it, <laughs> it, it uh, I can't remember whether it goes top down or bottom up. I'm just going to say I don't know. Uh, but it basically cuts it up into... Um, a grid, right? And each of these um, squares is going to be eight by eight by eight 
voxels. Yep. But what it does is it only keeps the ones where there's crust. So it keeps this one and this one. And of course, I've just sort of, you know, it just takes the ones that are near the, the surface. So the good news is, you know, um, it doesn't waste memory on all the solid bits and all the air bits. So that's good. But each of these little puppies is taking 8 times 8 times 8 times. I think it's DXT1 compressed color. So that's one byte color per voxel. And uh, the distance, I think, is 0.5. We also have roughness for Toxvig, Specular. Of course. Oh, do yep. we have that? I don't know. We, we might have that. Let's say it's one and a half to two, depending on how right I am. Uh, so what's that? Eight stream? Come on. Hit me. Come on, stream. So what is that? 64, 256 times oh. 1.5. That's not 256. What, 256. what is 1.8 by 8? No, 8 by 8 by 8. 512. 8 by 8 by 8. 512, mate. 64 times 8 by 8. 512, you're right. Noob. No, you're entirely right. Right. Goodness so yeah. right. somewhere between 1.5 and 2 <laughs> kilobytes per brick, right? Nice. But if this recipe had said loose plus, because you'd use the... Um, uh, what's it called again? The scope detail tool. That one. It would have chopped it up into fewer blocks, right? And so you would have got uh, less less of these 1.5 to 2 kilobyte things. Yeah. Mm. So out of your 2 gigabytes that you have for your entire level, and I don't know if it's 2, it might be 3, it might be 1, let's say 2, you've got 2 gigabytes of stuff that's reserved for your bricks, and all these bricks get put into, a ra you know, like Simon does a little nice like Tetris job and like arranges them all into this this two gigabyte um, area of memory, and yeah, you've only got a fixed budget. Yeah. Does that answer the question? I believe so. I yeah, believe so. Yeah, right. Um, so two, I've got two things. Yeah. So as we're talking, we're talking about thermo th 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 I, I can't even say thermometer. Ther you guys are here saying yes, these thermometer. Yeah. Um, just to say um, a, a thermometer. Should we ask Christoph to come in? Yeah. Yeah. Let's just let's just yeah. Um, cool tip for you. I'll get him in, and then while what he's coming in, I'll ask another question. Mm -hmm. um, disarmed. Yeah. Disarmed asks. Yep. Uh, how does lighting work in dreams? Was it built from the ground up, or oh, yeah. and then trails off? Yeah, it was all. So <laughs> everything's made up in dreams. Um, <laughs> uh, we use the GGX specular model, which is an off-the-shelf equation, one line of code, or whatever. But um, oh, how does lighting work in dreams? Um, I mean, it's it's pretty traditional. Um, Hello, Christoph. Hello, Christoph. Christoph. I'm going to answer this question and then you can tag in. But um, how does lighting work in dreams? So, um, mm. sorry, I'm just going to figure out what level of detail to answer this on. Um, <laughs> we lay down what's called a G buffer. So basically, um, uh, it's the size of your screen, so 1080, or if you're on a pro, uh, higher, um, nearly 4K. And for every pixel, the job of the G buffer is to store the normal, which is the direction of the, you know, surface at that point, uh, and this is all very traditional stuff. So you can go and Google other games use this is a deferred lighting engine. I mean, so in some sense, when you say was it built from the ground up, we coded our version of this, and Simon uh, did most of that implementation. But it is a standard. Uh, these are sort of, you know you sort of pick from standard ideas like G buffers and deferred rendering and stuff. So it's a deferred renderer. We have really good occlusion culling, which I won't go into, but if you make a scene with lots of overlapping bits, normal engines will cry because they'd spend ages drawing all the bits that you can't see. And Simon has a Super Ninja TM technique <laughs> for uh, chopping up the work to draw and figuring out very efficiently exactly what it needs to draw. So it lays down the G-buffer with your, your, your characters and stuff. And it also lays the splats on top. And the cool thing about this is at the end of that, you have for every pixel exactly one thing that won that pixel. So whatever's closest to the camera wins that pixel. You know, cool. um, and then we light the scene. And there's a few different elements to the light, right? So there's um, direct sunlight, which we, uh, we happen to use cascaded um, shadow maps. was another standard technique from the shelf. But yeah, so the direct sun uses a four cascade. And I believe Simon has some new work to improve the cascades for large levels. Right. So if you've ever had it where your sun and shadows kind of fade away or disappear in the distance, it's going to get better, although I think it's causing him trauma. Oh, no, nice. Sh shadow maps and graphics programmers are like, it's like the hatred. You have to do them because they're the only choice, but they suck. <laughs> so direct sunlight, which is cascaded shadow maps. Uh -huh. uh, and then we have the sky, which uses a 
pre-convolved environment mapped uh, env map to do the specular. So that's the shininess. And as you change the shininess slider, 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 we're changing the GGX uh, shininess thing, and it looks it up in a different. So what pre-convolved means is you've got an environment map which is like crystal clear sky, and then you have the slightly blurry one, and then you have the super blurry one, and then you have the insanely blurry one, and as you change the shininess, you basically pick a different one. Um, what else do we have? Oh, we, we also bake that down to spherical harmonics for the diffuse term. So basically in lighting and an engine, you normally have a specular term, which is the shiny stuff, and the diffuse term, which is the like uh, matte stuff. And you use different techniques for the two. Um, uh, what else have you got? Uh, uh, we've got space case and mid occlusion, yeah. and we also have a sky occlusion mid range thing. So what we do there is we actually make a Minecraft version of your level under the hood. So you can't see it, but it's basically like chunky blocks version right. of your level, and then we trace rays through that um, Minecraft version to figure out how much of the sky every pixel can see. So, um, minor lie, but roughly, roughly speaking. So uh, we basically trace rays through this very simplified version of the scene to figure out how much the sky is visible in a mid-range. But that, because it's Minecraft world, it can't capture the, the fine detail. Mm -hmm. So we combine that with screen space ambient occlusion to get the kind of crispy bits uh, in between. And the lights that you put down, I forget what they're called in the game, the omni lights, the... Lights. Just lights. lights. Yeah, I think lights. we just call them lights. Yeah, just lights. Well, the spotlights. <laughs> well, you've got, yeah, you've got spot and point lights. Mm. So, so you can change which one it is. So spotlights have their own um, shadow maps, each up to 16, uh, and it picks the closest 16 every frame uh, to the camera. Uh, then you also have the... Not spotlights, whatever point, they're called. Point lights. Point lights called? Which is actually, it was originally in LBP, we used to call them sprite lights, just confusingly. Um, <laughs> but they're not that. Basically, we use a thing called um, light propagation volumes. Um, oh, and we also have Froxel fog. Uh, I'll get to that. The light propagation volumes idea is um, that, again, sort of in Minecraft world, we inject light wherever there's a sort of omni light thing, and it propagates from from block to block to block. And you can actually see it happening. So like, as when you switch on and off those lights, it takes some time to fade away. Right, yeah. yeah. Glow um, uses the same, same system. Yeah. Yeah, glow, yeah. glow does glow the same thing. Does Every glowing glow. object is a light as well, and it injects light into the propagation volume. And the propagation volume itself is cascaded, which basically means you have a tight one around the player, and then you have a double size one that's lower res. I think they're like 64 cubed, where by 64 I might mean 32. I don't know. You can imagine a 64 cubed Minecraft world around you, but that doesn't go very far. So it's all right, we have another 64 cubed, but with double sized blocks. And then we have another 64 cubed, but with quadruple sized blocks. And then we have another 64 cubed with octuple sized blocks. And between them, the light propagates around and just generally like flows around. Mm. And um, that's, your, that's your things. And then you have Froxel fog, which is Froxels are voxels that are shaped like a frustum. And I invented the word Froxel. You invented that as of course your I did. thing. As, uh, it's a thing. Uh, and that's basically, this is the camera. Well, how do you draw a camera like that? Exactly how you want to draw is it. Is this on the stream, uh, by the way? Yes, it is. Oh, yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. Yeah. oh it is. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I've, thought I've been talking for ages, and they're just like, oh, he's looking at my face. Um, they can still see you talking as well. And here's so the screen good. side on, right? And here's like Bruce Lee or whoever is in your level. Uh, and uh, we, we chop up the world but only the bit you can see into Froxels. <laughs> and they're sort of wedge-shaped. A Froxel is a wedgy voxel, basically. And then I can't remember what we use the Froxel for. I think we cache certain things onto the Froxel. We might cache SSAO. It's changed a bit. But we, crucially, what we do is we actually accumulate the in-scattered light. So that's the atmosphere. So if you want to make an atmospheric level, you need there to be stuff in the... I'm such a swearer. There needs to be stuff in the air, <laughs> dust, and and yeah. when you put down a fog volume, when you mark something as foggy, it basically tells those froxels, collect light, please. And so as please. the light flows around, whether it's from the direct sunlight, whether it's from the sky, whether it's from the spotlights, whether it's from the LPV, 
um, the little froxels collect the light. And then we kind of accumulate all of the froxels along a line towards your eye, which is what gives you the god, what's so called god rays. And um, so basically, the answer to your question is all of those systems are off the shelf to the extent that the idea is off the shelf, but all the code was basically Simon with me waving my hands in the background going, we could do this. And he says, what you mean is I could, I could do that. And I'm like, yes, I'll do that. So yeah. Um, so there's a lot of elements that go together to make the lighting. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. That right. answers that. And uh, just answers yeah. thanks. Sorry, right. that <laughs> thanks. Right. Well, he said, he said longer. He said, let me, let me, he said, uh, I'll get you the exact answer right. he said. And then you can have Christoph. Yeah, <laughs> I've lost the answer, he, but he was very thankful. All right, cool. Wicked. So, so Christoph is going to... Let's yeah. let's change mood yeah. and yeah. bring up he a can place. Fit in, can you fit in between us? After, yeah, yeah. after the Christoph okay. section, yeah. we will, if we have time, and we're yeah. going to overrun, but I, I don't That's care. Fine. Do you care? I don't care too much. No, yeah. I'll right. keep going as long as We will show you our internal secret debug tools. And we'll try and answer some other questions. And replays. We should do replays. We should do replays. We should do... Oh, we should do so many things. Okay, right. Hi, Christoph. Oh, Hi, Christoph. Yeah, so you hey. about summer return optimizing and all yeah, that. Yeah, we were. Thing. I yeah. sprung this on Christoph um, yesterday, and I said, without warning, um, do a demo of a cool thing. <laughs> Which obviously Which is what you uh, need to ask molecules, and they'll do something. Yeah, 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 like, you know, like that. You yeah, know, yeah of your finger. Right, it cuts so, the PS4. So the thing, yeah, yeah. I need to cut this it. is actually oh, a cool oh. tip, by the yeah, way. Yeah, it's a cool tip because it's something I, I use since forever, basically. I always did that. Once I understood why I had mm -hmm, to do mm -hmm. it. So, <clears throat> and this demo is just like a, a stupid thing. Basically, it's like a rock made by Maya, which is beautiful. And it's not a stupid thing. It's no, no, no. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean like, I, I, as a gameplay element, also yeah. I'm a swearer. Okay. I, I got stripes. So that's maybe yeah. that's what it is. And so, basically, like that beautiful rock, you know, when you want it in your level, maybe you have like a character with a hacks or like a, you know, like a mm -hmm. cannon, which I get from the community, actually. Uh, and basically, you want that to be destroyed by that glowing ball. So, you know, when I got a hit, you have some explosion, which is something like uh, fairly easy to do. Uh, like you use a health manager and then you say when you losing health, you do like a bit of a timeline with a fog and then some camera shake and then a sound for the rocks. And then you also emit like tiny debris. It's, that's the basic. I, I did that like uh, really, really quickly, but that, that's what you want. Uh, when the so thing let's slow down. So, so every time it gets a hit, it does a little bit of debris. Exactly. Okay. And when you hit it like fully, it does like a big explosion. It does lots of debris and delete itself. Okay, nice. So Can we just see it again? Just, to, just, just to... And then boom, explosion. Beautiful. And then, okay. So that's one block, but in... When you make a platformer, a, a block is like a bounce pad. It's like a, it's an element of your gameplay, but you want like a lot of it. Mm -hmm. So, for example, just like make a lot of it. So, so like you're going to do a Kareem, three, like just yeah. channel Kareem, Four, basically. Yeah, yeah. Like six, seven, eight, nine, ten. He doesn't count. He just. Feels. I know, I know, but I want to count so I can compare the okay. before and after. Yeah, yeah. So then, so I have like one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. So now I have fifty, oh. uh, fifty of those ones. So, so there, no, are, there no. are. But the thing is, okay, let's extreme. Can you guess how many things are in the scene? I'll just leave it at that. How many things are in the scene? Lots. Lots. Yeah. You want me to? No, 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 that's cool. no. <laughs> no. <laughs> but yeah, a lot. So basically, the the thing, the thing is, I want to point out is like just by doing that, I'm reaching thirty percent of gameplay. Oh, with, boo! Yeah, exactly, boo! Rubbish. When I have one with the cannon, it's just two yeah. percent. So let's, so let's, let's do it again. Yeah, let's watch it. But the it, thing no, is, no, no, like, the, the play. Come on, let's. I want to oh, see. Course, I want to yeah, see the beauty. Yeah, just oh, the beauty of destruction. Come on. The beauty of the pew, 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 pew. Explosions, well, physics. Well, you could go home at this point. You're like, brilliant, lovely. <laughs> exactly. But your thermo's on 30%. Exactly, and you're like... The shame. Shame, you can't have more. But you're like, why is it so expensive? And then you disable the preview usability. Oh, no, of course. Oh, mon dieu. Every time, oh, mon dieu. Look at that, all those explosions and all those oh. debris. <laughs> How do we do? I don't know. All right. Baguette. <laughs> Magic tip. This is it. This is the payoff, people. The payoff is the emitter can refer something even if it's not inside not his group. Not refer. 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 Yeah, refer. Hello. Uh, refer is something else. Hello. So, I'm just going to show the emitter again. So, the emitter, that one is 
for the small debris, I mean, that one is a small debris and that one is the explosion upstairs. So when I do something, which is something I learned from making the space game, uh, the Victor Majoris thing, for the lasers and the explosion, when you throw like 30 laser, there was 30 explosion, 30 sound in it. And I was like, that's too expensive. You, you mm -hmm. cannot afford to do that. So how do you do that? So every time I make like an element of gameplay, Inside, I have a group called Spawn Stuff, because mm -hmm. that's how I name it. But you can, mm -hmm. of course, name it however you want. Mm -hmm. And then inside, you've got the different stuff you want to emit. And the pro tip is to grab that group. You grab it. You With turn it out. So you shift R2, R2. And then you shift tunnel out. So that's circle. So now, circle. So now I'm in the main level. I'm not inside my, I'm not inside my, my stone, stone thing. block. Yeah. But now, wait for it. If I clone that, that thing. So wait, how much? Ten, Four, three, five, five six, six, seven, eight, eight nine, nine ten. ten. And I do that again. So one, two, three, four, five. I now only have 7%, which means it was 2% before. So now it's just 5% of the gameplay for 50 blocks. Yeah, much better than 30. Much better than 30. And Does this still work, though? Of course it does work. Of course it does work. <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean? Of course you explode. You explode exactly the same. The physics is always the same. Frame yeah. rate's better, though. Frame rate is, of course, better because there's less thing in the scene. Mm. So if you want to optimize a lot more, you're like, oh, So yeah. hang on, pause. That's your tip, people. <laughs> That's is are your that's mind's it, not blown? That's the that's the that's, that's what Christoph. But then Christoph is never happy, right? No, so he's never. like, you can always do better. He's like, you can always. But how, Christoph? How, how can I, we how? do better? In all those microchip you can see here, there are three emitters. Actually, what you <laughs> the only two action you have is like losing health and no health. Yeah, and let's relate it back to the rest of the stream. So every single one of those blocks is a sculpt. Oh yes. A group. A Gad. microchip, microchip, a, a hearty thing, yeah. health, manager. Uh, health manager, and then those one, two, three, four, five. Wise. So nine, a minimum of nine plus and some then the stuff there's in a timeline. Oh, timeline. That's four. So another that's four. the thing I want to so talk about. So hang on. About. So we've got like thirteen or fourteen things in that very simple block, even yeah. after you've optimized. Yes. So you've got fourteen things that you've then stamped down fifty mm -hmm. times. That's just not good enough. I know. What are we going to do? Well, <laughs> what you're going to do is instead of having three emitters, because here I'm emitting the big debris and the explosion, but I can have the explosion in the debris. Oh my god. So it's just one emitter. Yeah. First pro tip, easy to do. The other one is why do you have the camera shake and the sound and the fog inside the object? You should emit it. You can emit it. Oh my god. So you just have one in the whole thing. Yeah. So you could and strip it. that block down to just a block. Yeah, a so basically in the end you should have that. If you, if you if you do it so that's six if, six less things yeah. that goes down to what mm. eight things yeah. total? Well, yeah. before there was like quite a lot of No, but there's four, yeah, so one, two, three, four, five, six. So you could trim off at least Exactly. six things. Yeah. That's a, a big deal. Yeah, that was good. There was a great moment there in the chat when uh, so when that's... the tip hit reached them. It was like OMG, <laughs> nice, mind blown. Oh, yeah. yeah, I keep seeing like guys making like wall by explode themselves. I was like, do they realize they could just not emit the thing everywhere? I'm like, yeah. I'm sure they do. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, there we go. So, uh, a yeah, quick thank tip. you very much, Christophe. That's really thank useful you. for absolutely every game. Yeah. Bye, guys. And yeah, yeah. so uh, yeah. emitters are very key to gameplay. Yeah. And uh, they, you pay for the thing that you're emitting. And so the idea of that tip comes from the fact that you pay for the things that make up. They're probably hidden, because you probably don't want them to be visible until you've emitted it. But you're still paying for them. Mm. And the idea is, why pay for those hidden things 100 times over when you can pay for them once and have all of the emitters emit the exact same copy? So there you go. That's mm. a top tip. So rather than going back into talky-talky, we are going to do talky-talky. Yeah, but rather we'll talk than over as doodling, we do stuff. Let's show you the secret hidden secret we have a, tools. Yeah. We, we can do that. Should we, we do that? Okay, do that. which what screen so do we, we want? So we want to go on to... We're on well, I think we're already on it, but I think no, we want to go to... PlayStation. PlayStation, please. The PlayStation. Oh, we're not on it yet, so let's go to the PlayStation. Yeah. Okay, okay, should we cool, just get... What, what do we, we want to go in, into? stay in Christoph's amazing Christoph's, level? Yeah, go into Christoph's option. Oh, oh. oh, don't let me in here. Alex is using the controller. All right, so we're going to go to Christoph's level in edit mode. Um, all right, cool. Actually, I'm going to swap so with you because you're better yeah, yeah. controllers than me, and I'll, okay, I'll let's mouse you. Amari, because oh my, 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 yeah. my mic is my wire. No, let's not, let's <laughs> not swap. It's fine. Uh, so we have, we have, we use a tool called uh, IMGUI, or Dear IMGUI, to give it full name, by yeah. Omar Cornu. Uh, 
Dear I'm GUI is amazing. It's a quick developer only GUI making right. system. Right. And uh, we've used it, it actually created for Tearaway originally, but now open source okay. and uh, widely used by absolutely everybody. I believe from, you know, Zelda, the Just most recent Zelda game used it. Wow. We use it. I mean, that's all enough, over the place. I've seen it crop up once in a E3. Yeah. Wonder. Yep, yep. <laughs> At least. Oh, yeah. It oh, popped yeah. up. So I think Days uh, Gone uses it. Yeah. Um, I, everybody it's, it's uses it. It's been all over the place. It's the be you know, a London studio Big user. Big round of applause. To yeah, um, nice yeah no, absolutely. Fantastic tool. Um, and so, yeah, if we have if this we little debug mode. Right click with I that. Have no and idea. you right click oh. at OMG. Uh, now, we, have, we haven't used the sort of fancy features of I'm GUI, so we just throw up these. Um, <laughs> These more and more and more, and every single one of these red buttons just brings up a whole Another other menu. pile of stuff, <laughs> uh, and like, oh my god! Um, and each of these blue lines is in turn a whole load of some of them bigger than others. The, um, uh, you get all sorts of interesting analysis, uh, and this is how we can analyze uh, what's going on. And we thought this one was interesting. The game stats roll out here. Yep. These are the thermos uh, that we will eventually reveal to you in detail, but this is so we can see what um, is happening in his level. So if I grab a cannon uh, and I just clone it, uh, in fact, I'll repeat it a bunch of times, we should see that the... So you've got uh, all sorts of things happening here. You've got the thing count rapidly increasing here. Yeah. Uh, you've got the soup size. So as we were saying, things live in the soup. This thing sort of this this thing here counts oh, how many you've going got. Full cream and it feels but good. But the soup oh. that soup is filling up. <laughs> they'll they'll come from this sort of. Uh, and oh. then and you'll see what you've That's got is you've got bodies. So actually, <laughs> like an interesting one is every time you add a new one, you get a new body. That's because to move a thing around in dreams, it has to be it has to have like a physical presence. And we call yeah. those uh, bodies. Uh, so every time you're adding a new one, and they go when you drop them all, they just go back to being static. So we lose all the bodies. But we've got what well, one thousand four hundred things. There you go in a lovely spiral of canony doom. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> we've only got 31 wires. 31 wires, I assume, because those are coming from the, the block. Yeah. Must yeah, be. yeah. So this is this is basically what we the, what we see. Uh, and we can see all sorts of interesting um, malarkey about what's going on. And, and one of the funnest ones is replays. Replays. Should we show, we replay? show replays? Mm -hmm. So, replay. so a thing that do we want to explain determinism. That's what, is that worth doing? Yeah, it's let's, actually, let's briefly, should we briefly cover that? Yeah, so the idea of determinism is oh, that one, yeah. um, computers are mostly deterministic. Um, and the idea is that if you have an input and a state, so a state might be the state of the nation, or the state of dreams, uh, or the state of a game. And uh, we actually use what's called functional reactive style. Mm -hmm. where the state of the game, by which I mean all of things, all the wires, all of the SO pages, everything, is in memory, and it's, it's not allowed to change. It's like a snapshot of the world. It's like, that's what happens when you publish. Actually, initial conditions. So another interesting oh, thing God. is, so many, so um, many to go down. when you save your level, yep. we actually basically take that snapshot of the game, and we put it onto the cloud or onto your save data. And that's what I mean by the state. Yep. Right. And then... What happens is you have a DualShock controller, or two moves, or if you're playing multiplayer on the couch, multiple of these things, yep. and um, they provide inputs. And those inputs are, uh, you know, the position of the controller, what buttons you down. Not very much state. So the yep. state might be megabytes, and yep. then the inputs might be just a few numbers, like oh, he's pressing X and she's pressing circle, and Grandpa is waving his imp around like a lunatic. Yep. And um, the idea of determinism is if you take those inputs and you apply them to the state, you get a new state, the next frame. Yep. So, you know, the, the, the imp has moved a little bit, the, the cannon has gone off, the uh, whatever's happened for one frame, one thirtieth of a second. And someone asked me on Twitter, does the gadget system, is it always on? Is it event-based? It's always on. Everything happens. And the crazy, crazy, if you're a programmer thing about dreams, is that whole game state, we completely create in a whole new one fresh and it's called Compute Game Out from Game In and Inputs. Oh, yeah. And that is the entire game that's it. is that's, that one that's function. That's where most of it all happens. Yeah. And it's functional in the sense that you take an old state, which is frame 102, yep. and some inputs, and you, you put them through this giant function, which is about, it was about 15,000 lines long oh, in a single CPP file. Yeah, I suppose at this point we probably split it out a bit, but it's terrifyingly long. It's all of the edit mode. All yeah, of pretty dreams. much all, all of create runs in that one function, pretty much. Yeah. It's not how you should program kids, <laughs> but it's how we program. And uh, you take that and it creates a new state. But the cool thing is you can do it over and over again and always get the same output. And it is we have a suite of, aka stack of about 64 
dev kits in a giant pile in IT blowing hot air at us. Mm. And we actually run all of our levels, loads of tests at QA build, um, and replays are the savior of QA, also the bane of QA, but mostly the savior, um, because they can basically record a playthrough. Yep. And they can then play that playthrough back and make sure that it ends up in exactly, exactly bit identical down to the last decimal place the same. So let's show you a replay. Yeah, yes, we can. Uh uh, we haven't really prepared one, so I'm going to try and I'm going to see what Good. do we want to try? Just do, should we get a network? No, no, let's record one. Let's oh, let's record one. Okay, fine. So what? Okay, so ready? <laughs> yeah. Okay, something. All right. So on three, one, two, three. So when he's click start, I'm just going to do stuff. I'm just going to wobble these cannons around. And so now what the system's done is it recorded what the level was like to begin with, and now all it's doing is just recording what Alex is doing every single frame. So this is literally like saving I don't know 30 bytes or something. Yep. And this is also the foundation of our network place. So although we don't currently have online multiplayer and we have no date for that yet, yep. the foundation of it is very strong because we can do this so basically have to click stop stop and those those inputs would be what would be going around your modem your your adsl your fiber yep. mm -hmm. um but it's very very low amount of data indeed and now we, we can load that up we have this and we can click that and we get this nice little menu up here that has a bunch of controls and we can play through that replay so if we click play you'll find that it's just going to play back i'm not touching exactly what alex hands did off. No. Hands i'm not touching any controller and, and it's we can do things like we can pause and we can step by step what Alex did. So here it's just applying one frame's worth of Alex's input, like what he was pressing, what he was doing with the controller mm -hmm. for one frame, for one frame, for one frame. Yeah. And this is super useful, not only for like for multiplayer, as Alex is saying, and for testing, but it's also useful for debugging. So if someone gets a bug, if someone gets a crash, if someone gets a weird thing happening with mm -hmm. the connectors, they can just record a replay, give it to a programmer, and then the programmer can literally it's like the person is reproducing the bug mm -hmm. right there on their machine. Unfortunately for the Dreamverse team, uh, because networking is harder, uh, they're not deterministic. So Indeed. in your face, uh, Dreamverse team, because <laughs> they don't get the benefit of this replay system. So basically, if they have a bug in the Dreamverse, they just have to kind of eyeball it and do it traditional style, where you basically try to reproduce it, or they ask a very kind QA person to try and find a way to reproduce the bug. Mm. Whereas when we uh, get a bug with the gameplay team and the, e and the editor team, uh, we can basically get the, if they can get it to happen once, if they've captured a replay of it, then we can probably make it happen again and again and again until we oh, find nice. the problem and dig into it. So yep. the programmer's life here is that you get your replay in from, from QA and they're like, here's a replay and something goes screwy about a minute in. And the cool thing for a programmer is you can watch it, put breakpoints in the code, annotate things, do, and then watch. And then at the moment that it goes wrong, you might miss it. You're like, oh, it happened five frames ago. Never mind. I yeah. shall rewind and do the replay again. So replays are amazing. And one of the ideas we've had is to add replay recording to the game. Yes. But everything is a trade-off. And the way I like to think of it is like, if you want to add a feature, and we want to add a feature all the time, you know what I'm like, we have to not add another feature. But replays are super cool, but they don't work across changes to the engine. So any change we make tends to break replays. And that's OK. Yep. The contract we have with QA is basically, screw you guys. We changed how the puppet heart works. <laughs> All the replays that use puppet hearts no longer function. So you yep. have to re-record them. So the danger of replays is that they are only really relevant to a particular version. version. Yep. Mm. Um, Might be a nice segue into talking about versions and how we deal with well, like let's do, let's, would you Let's do a multiple choice would you like us Ooh, to talk yeah. about um serialization and backwards compatibility mm. which is a very much a low level for the coders out there on the stream yeah, yeah, yeah. more codey stuff would you like us to talk about more thermo stuff or would you like us to do q a we do q a or we I can, don't we do can keep thermo. digging through some of the debug menus yeah, yeah. we've got a few do more questions uh, yeah. one question that we have got asked uh, quite a lot is uh you, what's a puppet heart What's oh, a puppet heart? So, yeah. so, puppet, so when, you, when you stamp a puppet into a level and when you tunnel into it and it's got that little base on its feet. Um, go on. That, yeah. That's so basically when, we go, when you go into this menu, and we've got two of them here pre-authored. So we've stick the blank one in. This group we're in now, it's not a group. It's, it's what's known as a puppet heart. So a puppet heart is technically a group for a lot of purposes, right? You can still grab all the things within it at once. You can still tweak it. But this one's a bit special in that it's got all of that lovely puppet stuff on it. So when the code is looking at a group, it knows that all the stuff inside is expected to behave like a puppet. It's expected to be able to run. It's expected to be able to uh, do a bunch of clever stuff that make the puppets behave like they do. Um, so, so it's got some of the same properties, but that is what a puppet yeah. is. And because this menu is so expansive, um, 
puppets are one of the biggest biggest things thing types, but not not super big enough to worry too much. Actually, I'm just going to see where. Ooh, do we have a Ooh. dashboard? We do. Is it on that screen? It is. I'm going to just copy paste something from here. Oh, I know what you're going for. Do you want me? To, I, I know what you're going for. If you want me to. Yeah, do you want it? Yeah, I, I can, might have selected enough. <laughs> so we actually print out on boot. Um, the size you want to do this in secret type. land? Or I can do camera. that. I can do that in secret land. Uh, actually, we're not on camera anyway, so you can do it. Oh, that's true. Like. Actually, yeah, that is. Yeah. Let's, uh, oops, not that one. Let's go. Uh, that so one. we actually print out on boot the size in bytes of every single thing. Right, let's see if we can find where let's those see if we are. Dig through all the mess. So we, when you boot the game, you're the console just spams a whole bunch of output. I'm just gonna trim this down. Get rid of all that. And Oh, that's kind of leave those in the property blah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Uh, right. Cut, cut to code. Oh, which code. Code. Right so uh, oh. we print this out on boot, and so you can see that a text gadget is 960 bytes of soup. Yep. So this you burn up some of your soup thermo. There's your puppet. Oh, sounds, oh. the sound actually is wow. Coming in at just under a kilobyte. That's not too not bad. Not so bad. Puppet, puppet heart. Six K. Oh. Six K. David Smith. Shame <laughs> on you. <laughs> you got your effect fields, sculpts. And by the way, the packing is also a shame number because uh, that wasted stuff in there. Yeah, yeah. So, so basically, there's like empty gaps in in the data um, that of memory that just we could make better use of if we. Uh, yeah. Well, we'd need to spend some time basically making use of that those gaps. But like you can see, pretty much every thing type here. So you've got your sky and sun. You've got your microchips. And these are basically directly to do with the number of tweaks. You guys could have figured these numbers out just by looking at. How many? Um, should we show them a thing type dot h? We can show them thing types dot h. Uh, so I think oh, wait, where's the mouse gone? There it is. So we've got like we've got a file basically that defines every thing type in the game and get, tells you what properties they have contained in them. So this is the one for animations. Uh, so we don't call them animations. We call them we call them recorders. action recorders, but also keyframes. So action recorders and keyframes are actually the same both thing. Both the same thing. We just pretend like they're not and give them different oh, and icons actually, and they behave a bit differently. Actually, Liam, I, I said on a stream once that you were going to work on one day the effectively allowing you to edit inside an animation a bit like how you can with the strokes for audio. Is yep. that a thing? So so we have a we have we have many, many plans and that is a thing. That's one of the plans. That that was not a full set. We do have plans to do exactly that. that full uh, we have we have many animation plans so to let's have a look at what does an animation have? It so has an animation has got uh, it's got all sorts of things. So it's got a position. Um, and it's also got a parent from model. That's basically a sort of also a position. Um, it's probably relative, probably it's not worth going into the deep, but basically this is uh, what is its position relative to the group it's in. Yeah. Um, uh, so it's got. Uh, do you know? Looking at it, I don't think we use output. Ah, oh, there Ooh, you go. Wasted, wasted. wasted space. Yeah. This is this. So I need code reviews. Uh, right. So we've got things like oh, so uh, this tweet props is things like where is the tweet menu? So when you open it, you know you can pin it, you can unpin it. Uh, so most things have this. It's just defines sort of where the tweet menu lives. Uh, and then you've got all your animation properties. You've got is it looping? Uh, you've got what color it is. Um, but then this is interesting. We used to have something called header page and data page. Indeed. But they've gone, and we now have a header and data pages, which probably is the replacement. And actually, this is about backwards compatibility. So then the following little block of code basically yeah. says, ooh, I'm loading. I'm going to translate it live yeah, yeah, from okay. the voiceover. I'll, I'll, I'll highlight you can as be you. The, yeah. Ooh, are we loading or are we saving? I think we're loading and we're upgrading. And the revision that we're loading is really old before we added animation strokes. So, oh my god, we need to load up the old variant type and the old number of frames and the old number of bytes. And then we need to kind of do some stuff. And we need to lo load the old version and then pack it into the new new style. So that little block of code there is upgrading an old dream to a new dream on the fly. And basically every yep. single thing type is scattered with like, oh, you're on patch one. This is a old light. And we added this new tweak that, that or we yep. changed the way angle works, or we changed the way sausages are saved or whatever. So we have tons and tons of code that does this kind of stuff. There's a simpler one down below. Oh, that's boring. So then we have more properties. Yep. We have the playhead. Uh, yeah, so we've got where the playhead is. Uh, start and end timer, basically, when you uh, when you clip it. So when you're on, uh, on a timeline, you can sort of clip the animation, or the action recorder, rather. And almost all of these are um, visible. The ones that the lines that start prop are the things that you see as a um, tweak in the tweak yep. menu. And the really nice thing is for a programmer here is that like if you want to add a new tweak, you just add a line in this file with like prop and then when you added it so the sr is basically a giant timeline of every change we've ever made to dreams oh yeah wow um and we give them names to, to say what the change is and in fact have we got serialized revision we do so we can have a look so we've got this file called serialized revision it starts with a, with a poem it has a uh <laughs> yeah it has a poem it has a nice big unicorn <laughs> in it unicorn. So, so when do we do we mention that it's called unicorn so when we re rebooted the engine for the yep. nth time we called it unicorn so we've that got unicorn serves a purpose actually which is that we wanted to start on line 100 for reasons yeah that's actually my fault. That 
Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and then here it is. So we've got basically a list of every every change we've made since it started. So initial is when we you know booted mm -hmm. Unicorn, and then you can just see the changes adding up. And I think we're oh god, I don't know how far this goes down. It goes a long way, but you can see. Let's just pick some random ones, shall we? Uh, and the amazing thing is, dreams can load. So there you go. this is where we added density to to sculpts. Uh, we've got uh, there you go. There's there's the motor bolt, I assume. Um, so these, every single one of these lines represents a change in the file format, basically. And or in data, if you're a database person, it's a kind of schema change. And um, the way that we've designed the saving and the backwards compatibility is that we can load a level from any of these older versions, and it will automatically upgrade uh, through the various um, uh, revisions. And I mean, you know, there's like uh, oh, where are we so up many. to? Well, oh, we're on 900 at this point. Wow. There's, there's just. Endless, yeah, we're not at the bottom of the file, but we're oh, going to not go too much We're not going to go super far, because at, at some point it's just new stuff, current but work. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but <laughs> right. yeah, so like this is where we add density to puppets. That's camera gadget mark seven. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, there you go. Uh, that, that there's, a, there's a gap in the file. Seven, oh, yeah. It skips from 787 to 789, so we've got a little Here lies 788, struck down in cold blood by Bogdan. Bogdan missing a number in the in the order, basically. So. Yeah, <coughs> um, bogged down. And um, so that that's and that's what you see in that. Oh, I've lost it now. Where last is it? one. Let's go to properties actually. So and yeah, we can go to properties. So these you'll see these are defining properties. So I say like, oh, we've added a property to animation that says it's playhead, but it doesn't tell you what kind of property it is, how it works. So we've got this other file which tells you what properties do. Uh, so here's just a snippet of that file, um, and it's basically a big table. It's just got a, a list of um, of properties. So you can see you've got things like this. These are emitter properties, so like the emitted object, how fast, whether it recycles. Uh, down here, we've got some things like uh, stuff for the follower. We've got stuff for sounds. And this is where we configure default values, ranges. Yeah, so you can see each limits. one has a, each one has a type. Each one has a default value. Uh, this is one. Each one has a string. So this is again for tool translation. Tip. So for the tooltip, when you hover over it in the tweet menu, that's what you'll see. Uh, each one's got an icon for the button in the tweet menu, and then some data that tells you uh, when you put it in the tweet menu what sort of thing it should have. Yeah. So if it's got a slider, what its limits are. Um, and these tables are really common uh, in, uh, where you, it's called data driven or, um, and the idea is that, that this table is actually interpreted by various bits of the code. It's interpreted by the stuff that saves and loads stuff. It's interpreted by the thing that builds the tweak menu UI. Yep. It's interpreted by various tools that we have. Um, so we can, for example, analyze across the whole Dreamiverse how many times people have touched a particular slider. Yep. So we discovered that you know 7% of all light gadgets in the thousands of wonderful dreams you've made have, have had that slider changed or this other slider changed. So um, that's properties. Um, yeah. Cool. Like, let's we go back to any more questions? Yeah, we've got yeah, a few. We obviously can't answer that. We'd, we could love to answer every question, but we'd be here for Absolutely. ages. Yeah. Um, so uh, Perjos said, uh, what was the last feature or issue you solved that made you guys feel very pleased with yourselves? <laughs> um, oh, wow. It's ongoing. Yeah, 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 I mean, yeah. Um, uh, I, I'm, ha I'm happy with trending. Trending? I added trending yeah. recently. Yeah. That's, that's, I'm happy with it because I'm very recently happy with it. You yeah, know, it'll yeah. fade away. Yeah. That was, that was they tend to get lost in the many years of. of yeah, like like yeah. you saw that you saw that list of features. Like there's this you forget half. But uh, I think recently the one that's made me happy was uh, I'm working on accessibility stuff at the moment, which is uh, mostly working on a non-motion control scheme, but a few other mm. options for people who might otherwise struggle to play Dreams. Yeah. Yeah. It's making me quite happy knowing that you know mm. we're gonna have a new wave of players that couldn't otherwise. otherwise yeah, and that's play. a big job because there's a lot of feel to that. It's not just about like. Science, a lot of it's art, kind yeah, of thing. Exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's just a lot of uh, we're going through like lots of user testing to make sure we get that right and that sort of thing. Um, mm, shout yeah. out to this user testing group. Yeah, 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 absolutely. They are invaluable. They are fantastic what they do, and they just give us lots of feedback to tell us how to make dreams no, better. Because no. as, as Alex was saying earlier, when we when we add new features and we sort of make guesses about how they work, and you know, user tests come back and they go, oh, it turns out that you know yeah. that, that guess you made not not, not so much. Not so much. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And uh, then we make the changes to make dreams as good as as, as we uh, can. Yeah. As yeah. We can, yeah. Um, Freakers asks, is physical paint the most expensive thing in Dreams? No. Nope. I mean, well, that's the thing. So the funny thing is, like, measure exp is expensive. So, like, there are all these different thermos and there are all these different pools and there will be a thermo just for paint and there'll be a thermo for sculpt. And so it's really hard when someone say, is this more expensive than that? It's like, well, actually, sculpt burns your thermo over here and sculpts would pay burn a completely different thermo or doors. So, for example, someone said, I'm, I'm beating on doors a lot today, but someone said... Oh, I've hit 100% on my doors. And I was like, feel for you, I feel pa pain, man. But he's like, does that mean I can't add any more sculpts? I was like, yeah, different thermo. Go ahead and... So although you can max out paint and the paint thermo, if you haven't put any sculpts in your level, yep. go for your life and add some um, uh, sculpts. One of the reasons paint, I think, has a bad rep is because there's no tool 
to, and we've talked about this internally, so this is on our feedback. Mm. So with a sculpt, at very least, you can either make them... Uh, you can make them tighter or looser, yep. and so that thermo comes down. But with paint, there's no equivalent. So right. if you have painted a crazily detailed um, painting, tough. There's no, th th there's nothing you can do. That's it. Yeah. And um, uh, I don't know if it does the sharing. So when you clone it, I don't know how yeah, fancy I pants it gets. I think it does do the sharing on a page level. Yeah. But there's a, I think there's a separate bundle of another thermometer somewhere in there of just like how many actual splats. So when you use the, when you go into the tweak menu for flex. a paint and you we flex. call them splats. Sorry, yes. So flex, <laughs> and when you go into the tweak menu and you hit that clone option, you know you can clone up to like you know two hundred percent copies. Yeah, then that is that is adding. That you're is burning adding, your flex. There is a separate thermometer there that you're adding to. Um, so, I guess. The answer to your question is, I think they have a bad rep because there's not an easy tool to simplify them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And one of the things we learned on Little Big Planet One, but obviously didn't learn well enough, lol, was um, that when you give someone a limit, I think that's fine as long as you give them a way out of the limit. Like, like if you've, if you've, if you, uh, I don't know what the analogy is. It's not off color, but you know, if you've backed yourself into a corner, at least give them a little exit door that they can go out. Yeah. And I think the problem with paint is that we haven't given you enough exit doors, and right. so we, we, we've talked about that. Um, yeah. But yeah, they're not. They're not burning the same thermo as sculpt or audio or things. Well, they, they do burn things. So actually, yeah. So when you do a sculpt, again, because you can independently select it, uh, the, the 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 quick way to find out is is it a slick a thing? Is like can I tunnel into it and can I select it? And ultimately, you sort of bottom out into one of these special modes. So the bits that you use to make your sculpt are not things. Yep. They mm. are things that go into the recipe. They're only in edit mode. They can't be changed during play mode. Um, and that's why they're not a thing. So you sort of you can think of dreams as this tree of things, with groups, puppet hearts, uh, and then you eventually get down to sculpts, uh, sounds, gadgets, uh, and then inside the um, uh, sculpts, for example, are the recipe, I think we've decided to call it, which in the SO page, they yeah, aren't recipes. things. And that transition is completely arbitrary, but we decided to make, we decided to do that uh, based on sharing. So again, that's a trade-off we made of, well, this isn't gonna change in edit mode, or sorry, outside of edit mode very much, so we'll stick it into SO page, we won't give it properties, it's not tweakable, you can only do it through the special tool, but as a result, it's shared if you duplicate the sculpt. So there's all these like, trade-offs that you're making. We could, of course, we could have made every single edit a thing, but then if you did a sculpting dragon with 50,000 paint things, your thing budget would have just been blown. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's like trade-offs. Sorry, long answer. No, it's good. Yeah. Um, let's, do, let's do one more. Do one more. Okay. We got one, one more. more. We well, Emberg's asked, not particularly Dreams question, but where would one learn to code? Where's the best place to start? I thought that would well, be a nice that's question a good for you question. guys to answer. Yeah, I would love to you answer. I, yeah. Well, all sorts of places. I mean, the, the, the great thing about... Well, internet these days, there's so many places. I think the, the, the biggest tip I think I have is that if you're learning to code, f find a thing that you want to try and make. Because when I, when I tried to learn to code uh, at home, before I went to university and you know had to do it for grades, uh, I, got put, I got quite put off because well, I, I sat down with a book and it was like, oh, you type this in and you get something in a command, you know, a command line window and it says, hello world. And I, that was cool, but it wasn't compelling. Um, so personally, I think if you're wanting to code to make games, a really good way of starting is to find some tutorials for Unity. I quite like Unity. I'm, yeah. I, I, rave about it basically it's um it's a lot more compelling to get like you know a sphere that represents your character like moving around a scene than it is to have a line saying hello world i i, I feel um so so i'd say look up some unity tutorials i think that's yeah. always quite quite a useful one i mean everyone has their own routine i mean my routine was i'm old so it was pre-internet asshole mm. man um <laughs> uh, but for me it was a demo scene so it's like mm. the bbs phoning up uh bbs downloading demos and um reading books in the book but I agree. Coding is a craft, mostly. I mean, there is science to so it. Computer science is a thing, and right. it's important. And learn your data structures. Learn your data structures. <laughs> and then forget them all and just use a hash table and an array. It's the only two you need. Um, uh, but uh, what was my point? It's, it's a, you learn by doing. Yeah. It's a craft. It's, it's, and um, I love craft, the craftsmanship of coding. Um, you have different styles. You have different people. I'm sort of fast and loose, and then other people are more like meticulous and German as I like to call it, like precision engineering. Um, uh, that's Simon. He's very precise. Mm. He's very precise. Um, uh, but you, you arrive at that style personally, and the only way you arrive at it is by, is by trying. I, um, I also got into it from the music angle. So, mm. like, you know, I was less into games as a kid and more into, like, basically making views music videos. If you don't know what the demo scene is, it's basically rubbish music videos 
but yet they're real time and so they're not rubbish. Mm. So amazing. And the demo scene is like close to my heart. I call it rubbish because I love it so dearly. Mm. Um, so yes, what Liam said, find something that motivates you to type code into an annoying computer and makes you want to throw this keyboard at the screen because it yeah. is a fundamentally um, frustrating process. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. And funnily enough, and Liam doesn't know this, Tom knows this, I want to do a MM oh, yes. coding with Alex stream announcement. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. not going to be dreams related because I'm going to code something. Uh, I have an idea in my head of what I want to code from scratch, from an empty window in C because that's what I know. Some people ask, what language should I learn? Doesn't matter. Seriously, yeah. does not matter. Yeah, yeah. Lua, C, C sharp, C++, Java, brain, I can't even yeah. say it's a word, <laughs> um, rude word. It really doesn't matter because that's why I hate CVs, which list out skills. I mean, that is actually useful in the real world. Yeah, it's good to know that, yeah. Uh, yes, well done. You can you can speak f three languages, but actually you could learn another one if you sat down and practiced for a bit. Uh, yeah. It's more about having the aptitude to like go on that journey from idea to running thing on your screen. And that's a really hard journey to learn, and it's difficult, and like you just have to try it but what language you do it in doesn't matter Absolutely. so i was thinking of doing a stream where i'm going to make something that i just want to make in my hobby time basically nothing to do with media Mol nothing to do with dreams but maybe I could stream it on the Media Molecule stream. Yeah, Plus yeah, oh yeah right. absolutely. Cool. And you could all tune in and like, obviously, yeah, yeah. it wouldn't be a dream stream. It wouldn't be a dream stream. We're thinking of maybe different. like different time slot slot or something. Yeah. And, um, you know, evening. make something simple. It won't be amazing, but it will be me chatting about those sort of questions. How do you get yeah. into coding? How do you go through the process? It'll be super dull. It'll be like two hours of me. If you've ever seen something like Handmade Hero, Casey uh, Muratori, yep. he's mm. an amazing guy. He does great streams. It's that sort of vibe of just, me typing into Visual Studio for a bit yeah. and chatting. Um, yeah. And yeah, so that that won't answer your question, but on that stream, that would be a good place to ask that question. Yeah. We could just chat. Awesome. Okay. Cool, I think that's I think that's a good place. I hope you enjoyed the uh, Under the Hood yeah. uh, dream stream. Yeah. We'll and uh, uh, let us know, and we will do more of these or less of these. Mm -hmm. or I think people would very much enjoy more of these. Cool. Um, yeah, absolutely. Everyone wants to see your artwork again, so I'll take a picture <laughs> of those and post those places it's beautiful um oh. and yeah thank you for tuning in thank you guys for yeah no worries excellent it was, it was, you um, missed this one oh, do you want to see do you want help. This? let's show again do you want to put yeah, it in the there camera we go. Okay. this is my that was prototype a test test yeah. lol help <laughs> that was that was our preparation this is basically what we did when we rehearsed the stream we yep. produced this image and then we're like it's gonna be fine <laughs> that is what happens that's yeah. our that's our brain that's how right. it goes um we'll be back on thursday with another community creation stream so uh tune in 5 p.m Load of lovely things being made. Um, and yeah, thank you very much. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.